I did not bring my uh, iPad. Ah, no, I'm just there. Oh, you can't. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll start. <coughs> this week's case, a middle-aged woman changes in the breast. I usually remember this as um, a shouting patient is not an emergency patient, meaning anything which is painful, hot, inflammatory, nothing much to worry. You should worry more about patients who are unconscious, not responding. Similarly, breast lesions, anything which is painful, distress to the patient, changing cyclically or all hormone related changes, nothing much to worry. The significant finding you should not miss is something which is not painful, may not be even diagnosed at all unless patient says if I feel here then it, I feel something there. These are the things you should ex explore more. Um, since a week, duration, short duration is more inflammatory, traumatic, longer duration, progressive increase is neoplastic. Feels a bit thicker, upper outer quadrant on the left breast is the common site to worry about, malignancies are more common, although we do not know exactly reason why. Pain no, nipple discharge no, no history of trauma. So, these are to exclude reactive conditions. Menstrual cycle again for irregularities. Mastalgia not usually, means sometimes it may be there, then you may have to ask when you get. Cyclical mastalgia can be just physiological, but also fibrocystic disease where the breast responds more to the hormone levels. Um, last menstrual period, she is due for period now and if she has pain. So, it is just to find out what is the relationship of uh, the pain or swelling or to the cycle. Early menarche, late menopause are risk factors due to estrogen. And she also has given history of nulliparity and a 45 year old woman failed inter uh, uh, no, fertilization. So, she has suffered or distress with infertility. So, there is a risk factor, appetite weight stable again, oral contraceptive pills, there is a big debate please read about what are all the different oral contraceptive pills which have significance uh, in malignancy. There is a debate, okay? so the, uh, both positive and negative sides of using oral contraceptive. Cervical smear, because this uh, CPC introduces you to all the disorders of female genital system, so now one by one the learning issues. has never had mammogram. I check my breast regularly. So, what is the importance of self check? Whether mammogram screening is it good or bad? Again, there is a debate. In the exam, we usually ask what is the debate? Discuss what is important or not. On examination, right breast is normal. Uh, left breast has form thickening. Now, this form thickening Note that it is not a tumor or a nodule, it is just the area of thickening, feels more indurated, which is a feature of hormone induced hyperplasia, not the malignancy. But malignancy can be there, but the gross appearance is more suggestive of reactive change. Upper outer axillary tail, that is the common location for tumor, 
no discrete mass, no skin tethering. Tethering is um, tethering and inversion of nipple are two characteristic features of breast cancer, but can also be seen in benign lesions. Is usually due to formation of scar within the breast tissue, scarring. And this scarring pulls in the skin or the nipple depending on its location. And breast cancer is very commonly producing these symptoms, skin tethering and inversion of nipple. No areola changes, we will come to that later. No axillary or supraclavicular lymph node, no nipple discharge. Important you should remember here, breast cancer is a peculiar type of malignancy, it produces more scar than the tumor, more scar than the tumor. So, no bleeding. Nipple discharge with the bloody discharge, malignancy is unlikely, unlikely, not necessarily known. And bleeding or discharge from nipple is more typical of inflammatory infections and the only tumor occasionally is called duct papilloma, a benign tumor, which produces typically blood, bloody discharge in the nipple. Occasionally, in situ carcinomas can produce, but typical carcinomas do not produce bleeding. Okay? What further investigations always suspect malignancy whenever there is even in their um, indurations or even if you do not feel anything but the patient's age is more than 30 to 50 years, important is to rule out early stage of malignancy. So, mammogram, fine needle aspiration biopsy, CT scan, PET scan, biopsy and these days we do all special marker studies <coughs> and in breast it is very important because therapy depends on this. Previously all breast cancer means one blanket therapy, but now it depends on <coughs> genetic makeup of the tumor. Now, irregular thickening is fibrocystic, discrete mass is tumor, skin tethering and nipple inversion is cancer, areolar changes is Paget's disease of the breast, we will discuss that later, lymph node of course malignancy, nipple discharge blood is papilloma, pus is duct ectasia, duct ectasia. Milk discharge, anybody? What do you suspect? CNS. Laboratory investigations, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, human epithelial growth factor receptor, HER2 and BRCA. You must know at least two or three lines of what each one is and what is their significance, because these are the important tests we do these days for breast cancer. Okay? So, on the mammogram, there is a solid, non-mobile, irregular mass lying at the 10 o'clock position of the left breast. Mass has prominent radiating spicules, we call stellate scar stellate scar like sun rays and this stellate scar with small micro calcification is seen on mammography and this is a characteristic telltale sign of malignancy cancer, but occasionally benign lesions can produce similar, but whenever we see this we exclude malignancy by biopsy. Okay. So, stellate scar radiating spicules with micro calcification. Ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration biopsy was done, showed high grade infiltrating duct carcinoma. Now, what does it mean? The commonest breast cancer is infiltrating duct carcinoma of no other specific type, NOS. That is the commonest type of breast cancer. There are other less common types but this is the most common, commonest type. 
CT scan, no sign of metastatic disease in liver or lung. So, that means the patient staging, what stage is the patient? Bone scan, no metastasis. Now, immunohistochemistry showed ER positive, PR negative, estrogen positive, progesterone negative, but HER2 triple plus, strong positivity. What is individual types mean? How does it alter the patient's prognosis and treatment? This patient's tumor would be classified modern classification is luminal B type. Luminal A, luminal B, basal and HER types of breast cancer now. So, this patient has a lesion suspicious of breast cancer, biopsy showed malignancy, a early stage no metastasis, but you have to discuss all differential diagnosis in this patient. So, this week's pathology is all about breast diseases, all benign, malignant and reactive conditions. Okay. So, the major trauma, infections, inflammations, mastitis, fat necrosis, abscess, hyperplasia is probably the commonest cause of breast nodule or breast mass, hyperplasia, fibrocystic disease, same as prostate, same as prostate, that is nodular hyperplasia in prostate due to excess response to the hormone. Here it is due to estrogen, the hormone is not DHT, here it is estrogen, that is all. Tumors less common, but important clinically because of their prognosis. Benign fibroadenoma, giant fibroadenoma, then malignant, the breast cancer various types. Few of the words you have to remember, minor conditions is ductectasia, breast cysts, Paget's disease of the breast and briefly gynecomastia and male uh, breast disorders. Okay? So, I have put one by one just some random case histories. A 22 year old female, so very young age, small mobile round lump in the right breast lower inner quadrant, what is the most typical diagnosis? Anybody? Come on. Fibroadenoma, very good. 39 year old female, multiple small lumps, irregular form, tender, more during mid cycle. What is this we are talking of? Anybody? Yes? Very good. Yes, fibrocystic disease. Now, each of this, what are all the points in support of this? What is the morphology? What is the microscopy? And what is the prognosis? You should be able to write few points. Why did you make the diagnosis? Usually, exam we ask this. What are the differential diagnosis? Justify your answer. That is where we expect, if you see single nodular mobile, that is fibroadenoma, multiple small lumps, irregular, pain or tenderness, fibrocystic disease. 41 year old female, two left axillary lymph nodes, but nothing else, no pain, no breast mass, mild loss of weight, think of only malignancy, okay? breast cancer, common as type the not otherwise specified infiltrating duct carcinoma. 39, um, 34 year old female, FNAC, fine needle aspiration, cytology reports, abnormal cells, no lymph nodes, still it is a malignancy. 39 year old female, painful lump, chronic post discharge from nipple is duct ectasia. 71 year old female rough red scaling pruritic patch on the left nipple and areola. 
what is the diagnosis? Pagets. 26 year old, younger age, right breast lump, firm irregular, 6 centimeters, fixed, not mobile. What is the risk factor? I am not asking diagnosis. Anybody? Last one. So, think of different clinical scenarios for common breast disorders and make a differential diagnosis justifying your points. It will help you a lot in your exams. So, clinical features benign, malignant, reactive, how would you differentiate when you look at a patient or examining the patient? What are the current guidelines? What is the debate around screening procedures? How would you differentiate hyperplasia from a neoplasia? Familial versus non-familial breast cancer features. When you look at a patient, what are all the features you would look for to diagnose familial? from non-familial. Fibrocystic disease, fibroadenoma and cancer in detail, etiology, pathogenesis, morphology, clinical features and complications, okay? common types. Note that duct carcinoma and lobular carcinoma major, two common ones and um, there are many other subtypes. BRCA, BRCA1, A2, the familial genes importance, what oncogenes it activates, what is the molecular basis of BRCA1, what other cancers are commonly seen in these patients, that would be a short note question. Okay? So, now briefly we will go through anatomy breast is a modified sweat gland, holocrine gland, what do you mean by mirocrine, apocrine, lobes and lobules, each lobe opens with the, its own lactiferous duct, lactiferous sinus, stroma, fibro fatty, asini and ducts. Okay. Anatomy, examination of the breast, clinical skills. Complete examination of breast involves its lymphatic drainage, lymph nodes. Microscopically, you see collection of asini glands with a duct and each gland has columnar cells ciliated border with myoepithelial cells, modified muscle cells surrounding the gland. That is for contraction and ejection of the milk, oxytocin responsive. In a male breast, everything is same except there are no asini, only ducts. And gynecomastia is just proliferation of ducts, no asini. So, that is the difference between male and female. Okay? In female, there is asini. Appearance of normal breast under the microscope. Now, this is a younger female, more fibrous tissue, less fat. You will see two types of stroma, interlobular stroma, which is dense fibrous tissue, intralobular stroma within the lobule is loose areolar, loose stroma with multiple glands and ducts and from each of these lobule one duct emerges out. Okay? A normal breast, just another, another example, the glands the ducts 
okay, dense stroma, very little fatty tissue. Scanning electron microscopy of lobule of a lactiferous breast, prominent that is all the each one is an asini, in between is expo, um, loose areolar connective tissue. Now, this is from Robbins comparing age changes. At young age, breast is more fibrous with very little fat. Reproductive age, more asini, more asini, but the stroma is same. So, just the glands undergo hypertrophy. At the later age, is plenty of fat with very few glands and the appearance on mammography. Now, if you observe fibrous tissue appears as whitish scars, okay, fibrous tissue. So, it is more fibrous at younger age, fibro fatty and more fatty at the later age. Disorders of the breast, I am going through congenital acquired neoplastic. Congenital is just aplasia, hyperplasia or hypertrophy, juvenile hypertrophy, accessory additional breasts or ectopic breasts. Breasts can develop anywhere along axilla to the pubic region known as milk line. Very rare, so just to know the names, but not necessarily details. Inflammatory disorders are quite common. Acute inflammations, acute mastitis, acute mastitis usually due to trauma, secondary infections, but more commonly during lactation because of oral bacteria of the baby affecting, infecting the mothers. So, lactational mastitis is very common. Occasionally, chronic mastitis can result. Tuberculosis, fungal infections, systemic infections can also affect breast. Trauma, quite common at younger age and usually results in fat necrosis, because uh, fat tissue within the breast, rupture of the fat cells leads to severe inflammatory reaction, traumatic fat necrosis and presents like a tumor and on healing it presents like a cancer only. Irregular scarring is very common in this traumatic fat necrosis later stages after healing. Duct ectasia is something like bronchiectasis, dilatation, permanent dilatation and secondary infection of the ducts like in the bronchus here lactiferous ducts and usually patients present with chronic sinus formation discharge from the nipple or even perforation of the skin with pus, duct ectasia. Galactosile is just obstruction to one of the lactiferous ducts leading to cyst formation. Now, all these congenital and inflammatory, I am just mentioning not going into details, but proliferative conditions, excess proliferation of glands that is fibrocystic disease and neoplasms, tumors are the ones we concentrate more. Gynecomastia, breast enlargement drugs, know some of the common drugs which can cause gynecomastia and clean clinical practice, chronic liver failure, cirrhosis, alcoholism is one of the common causes of gynecomastia. Even in enlarged breast in males, no glands will be there. Mastitis infections, commonest is lactational, <coughs> cracks in the nipple, staph aureus is the common organism, staphylococcus, surf, uh, skin bacteria. Mastitis, acute chronic tuberculous fungal duct ectasia is chronic dilatation irregularity of the ducts with loss of epithelium filled by just macrophages and pus. 
duct ectasia and usually it produces sinuses with the chronic oozing of the pus and scarring following duct ectasia mimics malignancy. Okay. Um, the details I will you read. Now, the commonest cause of clinically palpable breast mass is fibrocystic disease. Less than 10 percent of clinically diagnosed lumps in the breast are malignant. 90 percent is either physiologic hyperplasias are pathologic hyperplasias. What is fibrocystic disease? It is fibrocystic hyperplasia of the glands and stroma due to estrogen. Now, if you remember, we discussed in prostate nodular hyperplasia, nearly 80 percent of 80 year old males will have BPH. So, the nature has given that uh, very common prosthetic hyperplasia for males and the nature has given the same thing, but divided into two places for females. 40 percent breast, another 50 percent is uterine fibroids, hormone induced hyperplasias. So, together balance is maintained. Irregular in duration lumps cystic pain usually during hormonal excess discomfort and it presents as whitish scarring with fluid filled cysts which are dilated glands or um, ducts. Microscopically you will see fibrosis with markedly dilated cystic glands. Some of the glands will have single line of epithelium, some of the glands will have multilayered epithelium. When epithelium is more, we call it proliferative fibrocystic disease. When epithelium is less, only mainly cysts, then we call it non proliferative fibrocystic disease. What is the importance? Proliferative means more chance of malignancy, the cells are dividing. Non proliferative simply means a low grade fibrocystic disease less chance of malignancy. Okay? And usually this hyperplasia of glands okay, leads to ductal carcinoma in situ DCIS. Now, this word you will hear very commonly in the clinical practice because of screening systems we recognize more women with this DCIS, a pre malignant condition of cancer cells filling up the ducts, filling up the ducts, but not infiltrating, only within the ducts. It infiltrates everywhere inside the ducts, but does not infiltrate into the tissue, it does not spread out. And this condition we call DCIS, and it is very commonly diagnosed now because of screening system and this is a precancerous condition and then when it starts spreading it would be called breast cancer infiltrating duct carcinoma. So, fibrocystic disease presents as ir irregular densities multiple usually bilateral and on mammogram you see diffuse area of fibrosis with small cystic spaces. Okay? Small cystic spaces with more dense fibrosis and that is fibrocystic disease. Cut section irregular area of fibrosis with cysts, gross I am describing and microscopically compared to normal gland you will see cystic dilatation of the glands and epithelial hyperplasias. If epithelial hyperplasia is minimal, we call non proliferative. When epithelial hyperplasia is too much and filling the whole duct, we call it proliferative. 
and when the cells are very irregular and totally fill the ducts, then we call DCIS, the next stage. I will show you the pictures. So, proliferative and non-proliferative remember. Now, this is just comparison picture showing from low grade to high grade fibrocystic disease. Now, if you see this slide A, more fibrosis, fats, dilated cystic glands, but all of them very thin lining. In the next one, you are seeing more glands, multiple glands, few of them cystic. Although the hyperplasia is not seen in one gland, but there is hyperplasia in terms of increased number of glands. Or in the slide C, that is, so many cells fill up the whole enlarged duct, fill up the whole enlarged ducts and even form multiple duct like structures within, within the duct or it can form big cluster of proliferating small glands. Instead of being small glands or cystic glands, proliferating small glands. Now, all these are fibrocystic disease. Okay? This one is non-proliferative and all others are proliferative. It can be proliferation within the duct or outside a duct. Okay? Fibrocystic disease. Fibrocystic disease, I am just showing few more pictures, fibrous tissue, dilated glands and some proliferations. This is almost filling the whole duct and proliferations. So, this is ductal hyperplasia high grade. When it is all small glands plenty, the word is used is sclerosing adenosis. Adeno means glands, adenosis means too many glands, okay? but it is a type of just fibrocystic disease. Sometimes fibrocystic disease can present with just one big cyst, then we call blue dome cyst. Uncommon, most common is multiple, but sometimes when it is present single and large, Okay, so I've described hyperplasia. Etiology is estrogen, either estrogen excess or increased sensitivity to estrogen. Localized hyperplasia, presenting as diffuse, irregular firmness, discomfort and pain may be there with cyclical changes. Pathogenesis is just excess estrogen and proliferation. Morphology is irregular area of fibrosis with multiple cystic ducts. Microscopically two types, non-proliferative, proliferative, when the proliferation is too much and it is a precursor of malignancy. It is a precursor of malignancy. Okay? Now, next one we go into actual tumors, breast neoplasms. Breast neoplasms are tumors, neoplasias with abnormal DNA, can be localized, well capsulated, benign, mobile, we call mouse in the breast. A small mobile lump, when you are palpating, it slips under the examining fingers and that is very characteristic of a benign nodule. Malignancy means hard, stony and fixed. Benign is soft, rubbery and mobile. Okay? So, benign lump and a malignant lump. Fibrocystic disease for just for comparison, multiple irregular nodules. Uh, just showing uh, fibroadenoma types. The, it can be very small or huge. When it is huge, we call it fibroadenoma giant or cystosarcoma phyllodes. Sometimes at very young age, 
it can produce a big benign fibroadenoma known as juvenile fibroadenoma, which is still a low grade, but very rare. Now, fibroadenoma, this is excision biopsy. The yellow is the peritumoral fat, that is the normal breast there and the tumor is bisected, it is well demarcated, capsulated, whitish nodule and microscopically it shows fibrous tissue capsule and within the tumor it looks like intraductal tissue within the lobule, intralobular tissue, intralobular not ductal that is loose areolar connective tissue just like in a normal breast lobule, but here the glands are bigger and compressed slit like okay, and with well demarcated capsule. That is a normal breast fat and fibroadenomas are common in very young age common and usually does not require any treatment unless for cosmetic reasons or if it is enlarging then surgery is usually done and it is curative. So, it is a benign and on a mammogram a benign lesion has a well demarcated rounded consistency whereas, malignancy would be irregular stellate. So, just a few examples of fibroadenomas well demarcated round and sometimes the glands can be very few more fibrous tissue and after long time it can undergo dense fibrosis as well like in this case. Otherwise they would look like this. So, fibroadenoma well demarcated, capsulated, grayish white, microscopy compressed slit like glands in loose areolar stroma. They can be multiple or they can be single. Now, this is giant fibroadenoma. Giant fibroadenoma is also known as cystosarcoma phylodes, P H Y phylodes. That is because the gross specimen looks like a folded leaves, something like a cabbage, I do not know. It looks like folded leaves and that is why it is known as phylodes tumor. They can be benign to malignant okay, variation. The only difference microscopically is they are more cellular and branching glands. Branching glands, more prominent glands, more cells and it can be benign too malignant and even sarcomas can arise from that. Okay. So, giant fibroadenoma. So, here I am just showing the picture comparison. This is more of a benign fibroadenoma, here it is giant fibroadenoma. Leaf like close knit branches. Now, briefly whenever you suspect or there is hemorrhage or bloody discharge, suspect this tumor that is a sub areolar in one of the ducts a papilloma with a stalk branching finger like projections and it is intraductal papilloma. It is, it is still a benign one although it bleeds, blood comes, but it is still a benign tumor. Okay, so, benign tumors have covered. Now, coming to breast carcinoma, the most important major learning issue, quite common although because of proper breast, uh, breast screening, nowadays it is not the topmost cancer of females, it is still lung cancer, uh, but it is still significant. 1 in 8 to 1 in 10 variation between countries. So, it is very common.
it is increasing in incidency incidence and it is the commonest cause of death in the young woman less than 55 years so prognosis is still not good it's very rare before age of 30 usually it is genetic types which are early more than 50 years is usually non-genetic or non-familial. Majority of the cancers occur in the ducts. Now we also, now we know that even the lobular carcinoma does not arise from the lobule. It does arise from the ducts only and the ducts differentiate towards lobular differentiation in the cancer. So, almost all cancers of breast occur in the ducts just like in the lungs all bronchogenic here also ducts etiology of breast cancer probably you all know but remember the three major groups hormone excess hormone environment genetics obesity hyperestrogenism breast cancer smoking oncogenicity breast cancer genetics BRCA1 breast cancer, excess hormone due to any reason. Okay? Now, this is a nice picture demonstrating pathogenesis, pathogenesis steps in la breast cancer. A normal duct like this in a fibrocystic disease, hyperplasia is excess cells. But when one of the cells undergo mutation, oncogene activation leads to filling up of the duct, filling up of the duct and smaller minor ducts, then it is known as carcinoma in situ. And when it breaks open the duct and infiltrates its invasive cancer. So, hyperplasia, dysplasia, DCIS and carcinoma. The first step is fibrocystic change or fibrocystic disease, later stage is cancer. Okay? So, the same thing, but with more description, the pathogenesis. So, I want you to remember and write down the steps and the pictures. Now, I am just showing some of the pictures of DCIS. Uh, I used to go every Wednesday morning, the breast meeting in the hospital pathology department. Majority of the cases were DCIS. DCIS is when abnormal cells fill up the whole duct with calcification. That is the calcification within the duct. Okay? And sometimes the central necrosis we call comedo. Comedo means central necrosis, comedo carcinoma. It is still a in the ductal carcinoma in situ because the duct myoepithelial cells, you see the nuclei here, they are still intact, but it is filling up all the ducts, branches of the ducts and so it is DCIS. Okay, but with this central necrosis is supposed to be considered as high risk factor for malignancy. In fact, when we say, when we diagnose DCIS with comedo pattern, the treatment is almost same as breast cancer. Okay? So, it just says that it is high grade in situ carcinoma. This one is just to show the special staining done for myoepithelial cells, the central necrosis irregular placement of cells. It looks benign, it is malignant, but the basement membrane is still intact. So, this is the characteristic feature of DCA. So, when we have to differentiate whether there is infiltration or not, we do this staining. Now, DCIS that is pre-cancerous phase can present with now, this is a whole breast mammogram from a specimen showing all the ducts full of malignant cells and calcifications, calcifications. Microscopically, it shows all the ducts enlarged with central necrosis <coughs> and calcifications. 
Now, such breast may not produce any particular tumor or swelling. The whole breast enlarges, form irregular feeling, thickening, but the whole breast and that is DCIS, in situ carcinomas. Okay? Now, briefly, <coughs> the invasive cancers that is actual carcinoma, breast carcinoma, the commonest type approximately 75 percent is infiltrating duct carcinoma of no other specific type, all others are all specific types. Okay? Just remember the names here, infiltrating duct carcinoma, the commonest lobular carcinoma, combined ductal and lobular, medullary carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, comedo carcinoma and lastly DCIS, that is DCIS with comedo pattern can be also included in this. Now, the commonest is infiltrating duct cancer. Now, this used to be the previous classifications, but nowadays we do special staining immunohistochemistry and further divide cancers into these four groups now. Luminal A, luminal B, basal like and HER positive. Now, is easy to understand. Remember, ER, PR, ER is estrogen receptor means the cells are functioning. Epidermal growth factor receptor means cells are dividing. So, presence of ER in a breast tissue is good because that means it is differentiating whereas HER is bad because that means the cells are more dividing high grade. Okay? So, just these two. So, based on this luminal A is ER positive, HER negative that means it is a good prognosis low grade. Luminal B is both are positive. So, it is almost intermediate grade luminal B. Now, basal like carcinomas are high grade carcinomas, usually familial type. They occur at a very young age with carry a poor prognosis. They are negative for all. We call triple negative breast cancers that is ER, PR, HER all negative and they are poor prognosis, young age and these are the familial. Familial cancers are only about 1 to 3 percent in a clinical practice. So, if they are not common. Now, pure HER positive epidermal growth factor, ER negative are high grade cancers of the common type. And uh, I just ask you to read trastuzumab and its importance, why it is effective in some breast cancer patients, not in others, what is Herceptin. Okay, understanding the same thing. Now, I am just showing few pictures. Nipple retraction, skin puckering, or lymph node enlargement, or lymph node ulceration, very clinically suggestive of malignancy. Irregular skin puckering, depressions. Why breast cancer? Now, if you have noticed in all my slides, I have put this crab. The sign of cancer, the crab was initially described based on the breast cancer appearance. Unlike other cancers, the breast cancer retracts. So, if a patient has cancer on the left breast, that would appear smaller or with puckering or with nipple retraction rather than projection malignancy. So, tumor is contractile. There are tumor cells, but it produces chemical mediators of fibrosis and scarring. And the malignant cells grow as tubules outside from the central tumor and around the tubules dense fibrosis develops. So, in a cut section of a breast cancer specimen, we see radiating scars and inside the scar is malignant tubules. Okay? So, irregular tubules and this is because of the chemical mediators released by malignant cells and that results in 
skin puckering because of attachment to the skin are more commonly retraction of the nipple because it is from the ducts the cancer so it pulls the ducts with fibrosis okay so that's the picture very characteristic of although extensive stage this is the horizontal cut section no vertical cut section that's the surface skin more fat so aged patient and you can see these whitish layers and nipple is almost totally destroyed it has been pulled inside and destroyed okay and that's that cancer appearance it looks like just a scar okay and that is the commonest type of nos nos not otherwise specified and mammogram shows this characteristic appearance of radiating scar radiating scar tissue from a central tumor a very characteristic radiating scar radiating scar okay now briefly other types occasionally less than 10% breast cancer can produce bulging without nipple or skin retraction without fibrosis and these are usually the familial high grade type cancers known as medullary carcinoma or inflammatory carcinoma wherein there will be plenty of inflammatory cells and breast malignant tissue as just clusters of cells no ducts no formation of ducts now this one nipple retraction and the dense fibrosis the same thing microscopically you will see now this is our online slide we will go more details tomorrow that's the cut section of the central tumor these are the radiating bands and if we see in a high power view here you will see dense fibrous tissue collagen here this is and in between irregular ducts these are the malignant cells pleomorphic cells forming irregular ducts in a dense fibrous stroma okay in fact most of the tumor is outside rather than in the center center they would have been killed by the dense fibrous tissue but periphery the tumor would be growing okay and this i have just shown this area here where the ducts are showing dcis within the duct the malignant cells are filling up not infiltrating just filling up and that's the dcis the pre malignant stage still there so infiltrating that carcinoma the central radiating scar irregular tubules okay now breast cancer can produce lymphedema due to the tumor itself or due to chemotherapy when tumor infiltrates into the lymphatic ducts lymphatic channels now that's the skin of the breast tissue what we are showing is uh, dilated spaces with rounded clusters of cells actually tumor cells within the lymphatic vessels leading to obstruction and like elephantiasis feature with pitting and edema so lymphedema non pitting edema also known as pud orange or orange peel appearance of the skin it can also happen due to treatment or also due to malignancy obstructing now here you can see the total destruction of the nipple and that edematous appearance of the skin now this one even microscopy i am trying to show that's a tumor another type medullary carcinoma wherein you see just sheets of cells and no formation of any glands with dense inflammatory infiltrate infiltrates all lymphocytes in this case plenty of inflammatory cells and just sheets of cells so this is a high grade breast cancer not common okay 
Now briefly, lobular carcinoma. Lobular carcinoma is where the malignancy looks like lobules rather than ducts and they usually spread around the benign ducts, normal ducts, it looks the spreading there and the cells spread in between the fibrous tissue bundles and it looks like series of soldiers walking in the bush. Okay, I do not know some uh, pathologist thought of this and uh, we call it India file pattern, Indian file pattern single cell lines in between the fibrous tissue a feature seen in lobular. I do not expect you to remember, just remember that there are no ducts. Spread of the breast you all know very well, anatomy, the lymphatic drainage, what are the common sites. Now, Paget's disease is an interesting condition, Paget's disease of the bone, Paget's disease, you must have been a brilliant pathologist. Many diseases are named after him, but know the difference. So, Paget's disease of the breast is actually malignant cells from a DCIS or an infiltrating duct carcinoma spreading along the duct into the peri areolar region producing eczematous patch, eczematous. So, it looks like eczema only, really under the microscope you will see malignant cells clustering in the epidermis, almost like a melanoma it looks like and it will be usually around the nipple and areola only because it spreads along the duct. Very occasionally it can be anywhere on the breast um, surface, but more commonly around the areola. Okay? So, Pager's disease it is just a special type of spread from breast cancer, also DCIS in situ carcinoma. Staging very important, but you can apply the same TNM classification, okay, TNM classification, but just note that stage 1 has a very good prognosis compared to stage 4. Diagnosis, history, detailed examination is very, very important and if as uh, you read through screening of breast, it has caused more problems than help. Now, there are Cochrane database um, research showing that there is more harm by doing screening. I am not saying yes or no for screening, just understand that there is a debate. Fine needle aspiration biopsy, core or needle biopsy, excision biopsy all in the stages. If mammogram is abnormal, then you go next stage, if that is abnormal, next stage, then next stage like that. Okay? Triple assessment that is clinical imaging and biopsy. Now, when we see breast clinic lumps in a breast clinic, Majority 40 percent is fibrocystic disease, 30 percent normal, no disease and if you see only less than 10 percent is actually cancer. So, it is important not to over diagnose, but not to miss the cancer as well. A palpable mass 12 percent only. I thought of putting this slide, but not explaining, read about mammogram, what are the procedure, principles, how it detects, what will be the appearance of individual tissues under mammogram. So, just look at different pictures, because probably this will be the ones you will be seeing clinically more than biopsy or microscopy. So, it is better to know mammogram. So, this is what I was talking breast cancer screening new research, multiple research together 600,000 women and it says out of 2001 will avoid dying of breast cancer, but 10 healthy women will be treated unnecessarily and more than 200 experience distress. And also the research says that 
there was no significant difference in screened and non screened population. Not to make a decision, but to have a discussion because we target this in the exams. Breast cytology, putting a needle aspirating, a normal cytology would appear look like this, that is a normal cytology. Now, if you observe this nuclei, regular round spaced, no crowding, they well spread out. Whereas, in malignancy they crowd one over the other, irregularities, some large, some small, various shapes and that is malignancy, that is normal. So, we just put a needle and aspirate the fluid. Okay? Tumor markers you read about, ER, PR, HER and one additional is E cadherin. E cadherin is usually used to differentiate the classic breast cancer duct carcinoma from lobular carcinoma. Lobular carcinoma is negative, duct carcinoma is positive. BRCA1, A2 that is mainly for familial. Now, how do we see this um, ER, PR, HER is by doing immunoperoxidase stain based on any of these hormones, the color would be the same. If it is negative to strongly positive, so we look at microscopic fields and look at how the positivity for each cell and we grade it as either negative 1 plus 2 plus or 3 plus. So, I am just showing appearance of immunoperoxidase, where other uh, cellular structures are counter stained, only the stain used is immunoperoxidase, peroxidase, horse radish peroxidase and positivity means whichever antibody we have put. So, nuclear ER positivity, uh, estrogen receptors are on the nucleus and if you remember estrogen is a nuclear activating hormone, it starts cell division start cell division, progesterone is cell function. Um, so, ER positivity is seen usually within the nucleus. Now, if you see this line, these cells are positive, whereas these cells are negative. You can see the nuclei there, but they are negative. So, some of the cells are positive, some of the cells are negative and as in the previous slide, we grade the cells. And nowadays, there is micro array that is multiple gene probes onto the tissue applied in a single slide. So, multiple diagnosis on one slide, just I thought know the name that is all micro array. Okay? HER 2 importance you need to read about, BRC that is familial genes A 1 and A 2 fluorescent in situ hybridization technique we use and it is done for high risk families, mother had breast cancer at a younger age, all daughters need to be tested for this. Progression of breast cancer, patho uh, genesis we have already described, commonest presentation the carcinoma of not otherwise specified or NYS type, radial scar on mammogram, fibrous tissue with adhesions to the surrounding tissue, skin puckering and nipple retraction okay? and microscopically the same radial scar, dense fibrous tissue, pleomorphic cells forming irregular glands inside dense fibrous tissue, that is the microscopy and that is it. 5 minutes break, we will go through the slides quickly. Any questions?